So she worked and is known for her mastery of the Jamaican dialect, the Patois. And you know, in recent years, certainly in the last 10 years, though I'm sure it's been going on for much longer, there's been a raging debate about official quote-unquote recognition of Jamaican Patois and actually teaching um, Patois. What is your take on, on, on that? Um, on my take is largely a borrowed take, borrowed from the people who've been doing the education research. Mm -hmm. And that goes back, I think, to probably the 60s when Dennis Craig was around. Oh, yes, of course. And recognizing that many of the problems of standard of writing standard English had to do with not recognizing that the Creole is arguably a separate language. Yes, yes. So that if you use some of the foreign language techniques, mm -hmm. it would help. Um, I don't think I'm in favor of teaching the Patois or the Creole. Mm -hmm but teaching through the Patois in Creole. Absolutely. In other words, the argument goes, you teach people in their mother tongue. That is the most effective way, and a lot of the, apparently there's a lot of education research that says that. Okay. Okay. You know, if you start in the mother tongue and you teach them to read in the mother tongue, that reading skill, for example, transfers into whatever foreign language they transfer fairly easily right. into whatever foreign language they talk I, mean, I won't get into the debate <laughs> here, but the difficulty with that, of course, is that you know there is no standard for Patro. I do take your point, you know, we recently worked on a book with a, a, a teacher who was actually teaching teenage boys in the prison system in Trinidad and having a difficult time getting through to them until she realized she was teaching them in standard English, which they couldn't grasp, couldn't understand. So she brought in a specialist uh, uh, to teach uh, English for speakers of other languages. And, I mean, she said the, the, the results were remarkable, you know. So I, I, I think I agree with you, you know, it is to, to first recognize yes. and not deny <laughs> that it is predominant. But I need to say, though, that there's more of a standard in the Creole than is, there, is generally recognized. Is right? The specialists you know, oh. can talk to us about the grammar of the Creole. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, Barry Loftman Bailey was one of the early people who did early work on this. Hers is very technical, really. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I haven't tried to do all <laughs> But um, people like um, Cassidy, mm -hmm. uh, who are pretty accessible, right. um, it's quite clear that you know there are overlaps between the Creole and the standard end right. of Jamaican yes. speech, yes. but um, you know, it's possible to see one end of it as being virtually a different language. Yes, yeah. well you know, people always say of course, even in speaking it, you know, a person from the western side of the island sounds so differently, the intonation and so on and differently. And as you're talking about education and teaching, you know, something that struck me, especially in relation to uh, Miss Lou and the nature of her performances, is that she sought to have technical training, even though she, at the time when she was doing it, had already been accepted, but she wanted formal training to know the background and the intricacies and the technique of, you know, how she was supposed to deliver and so on. And, uh, you know, I think that's something that's important for, for it's all very, of us. It's very you know, important. No matter it's how much important. you already know or you learn on the job, that's right. You know, they, but it's, they, it's one of the things that um, many teachers learn. I mean, that it, teaching is a good way to teach you what you don't what know. What you don't know. <laughs> what you don't know. What you so don't that, um, know. you know, she, because she was being invited to come and comment on the dramatic skits that they'd done. Right, yes, yes, and so on, yes. She began to feel that it would be useful to have more formal training. And it was, to me, it was so lovely that she was elevated almost to this position of a social, a social commentator herself, you know, through her, her oh, poems and so on. Absolutely. So I can, I can understand that need. So moving on now, Bocas Lit Fest took place in Trinidad a, a few weeks ago. Yes. Now, you know, in the Caribbean, we're known to be very, um, very insular. How was Miss Lou received in, in, in Canada? Uh, I don't, uh, in, 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 in Trinidad, Trinidad, I'm sorry. Um, I don't have any useful answer. I mm -hmm. mean, it was received that the fact that the book was there mm -hmm. and people were buying the book. And I had a session in which Philip Nanton mm -hmm. talked with me about, you know, asked questions right. and we talked about right. the book. Um, that was, that the session went well. Mm -hmm. People seemed to enjoy it and it seemed to encourage them to go and 
by whatever copies remain. So. <laughs> but what I can't say you see, is I didn't in Trinidad in that short time run into anybody who was giving me a response to right. the book. Right. <laughs> well, it would have been too short yeah. a time because we had just gotten right. We had just gotten our, our copies in, and then of course we learned this week that you're going to be on the podium, so to speak, at, at Calabash as well. What will your participation um, entail in terms? Um, of I think I'm members? simply one of what we know before readers in one of the sessions. Okay. I think I have been slotted. They told me that they invite me to read in the session on Saturday morning where Venema Pollard, okay, uh, Millicent morning. Graham right. and and Margaret Lim mm -hmm. are reading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So which is okay. which is fine. I don't think I did anything no. you know um. beyond that. <laughs> okay, okay, great. So what are your hopes really for Miss Lou? It ha having researched for so long, having worked with her, and now the final product being here. What do you hope for this book, beyond sales, of course, um, but what will you hope this book would do or achieve? Is there anything beyond sales? <laughs> of course, of course. Well, you know, as, you know, as publishers, you know, I mean, that I is know. our first call, I know, but I you know, know, we, I know, we select yes, some I just, of the things I just, we I just do. <laughs> the, um, the, the thing is that. I, my hope for this book, which is very specific, I hope that the general reader will find it so easy to read mm -hmm. that they, they buy it mm -hmm. and read it. You know, sometimes um, books which are about literary figures um, require um, a certain level of training mm -hmm. before you can really do your thoughts in it. Right. I don't think there's anything in this book that the ordinary reader of a newspaper Find well, I certainly, I certainly enjoy reading it, and I mean, I'm sure you know references to Ring Ding and the you know the various pantomimes and so on was it. I remember Saturdays and Miss Lou Ring right. Ding and clap yourself yes, and yes, the happy yes. birthday. Yes, All of that was so lovely, and you know it's a shame we don't have anything quite like that now. But then there was no one quite like Miss Lou. There was no. So um, you told us earlier that um, you know you're you're always writing and rewriting and so on. So now as poet laureate, um, what's next on the horizon? Any well, I, I'm working on um, trying submitting. In fact, I should have done submitted it a little earlier than now. Um, my collected poems, so that I'm hoping that um, you know I'll be able to send that off. And that the publisher wanted. Right. He sounded right. interested earlier. Oh, but that's lovely. It ties in quite nicely with the, this. It will, but it will take a lot. It will be a nearly two it, years yes, before that will actually be in print if, if, if they get it in the next two months. Right. Mm. As long as two years? Yes, because um, a few months ago, if you were saying it would be in 2016. Okay. Okay. Oh, I suppose because of the schedule that they already. Have. I think so. Yeah. But they so, have a very busy schedule. I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. So, speaking of poetry, what's what's your favorite poem? Um, I have so many different favorite poems, mm -hmm. but um, when you asked me that, I thought I would dig up one which is very much one of the favorites. Um, it's a poem by Stevie Smith. Who happened to be a woman um, poet in, from Britain, mm -hmm. and it's something I've often used in workshops and okay. classes, and I really like it a lot. Please. Not waving, but drowning. Nobody heard him, the dead man, but still he lay moaning. I was much further out than you thought, and not waving but drowning. Poor chap, he always loved Larkin and now he's dead. It must have been too cold for him. His heart gave way, they said. Oh, no, no, no. It was too cold always. Still the dead one lay moaning. I was much too far out all my life and not waving, but drowning. I think your voice alone <laughs> carries, carries the poem. Well, thank you so much, Professor Morris.